Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. I am back! It has been one hell of a month. Um, between the arrival of Speed Freaks, Space Marine Adventures, uh, Warhammer Quest, Blackstone Fortress, there's been so much gaming goodness um, arriving at my house recently, and I have got a little bit behind schedule. So I have here a wedge of Warhammer Conquest magazines. Um, this is uh, something that I subscribe to and regulars on my channel will know that every month I get four of these magazines in the post in a bundle and I go through them, I open them up and we take a little look at the value of the contents because this is a Partworks magazine, it's weekly but like I say I get, get four a month in a single bundle and it's uh, made by Hatchet Parkworks in association with Games Workshop and in each issue you get a magazine that teaches you about the lore of Warhammer 40,000 and also how to play the game and in each issue you get some Games Workshop gaming goodness in the form of miniatures, paints or brushes or other hobby supplies. I've had these about a week now but like I say it has been a hectic few days um, not helped by the fact that it is getting close to Christmas and that means my daughter is in the choir and there's Christmas parties and there's Christmas events at the school and um, and yeah it's just been bedlam but here I am and we're going to talk about Warhammer Conquest but first we're going to talk about this as a subscriber to Warhammer 40,000 Conquest every uh, every month for the first sort of five or six months I get a free gift this month's free gift is the legendary citadel painting handle when these first came out games workshop couldn't keep them in stock for love and the money people were buying these 10 at a time and and which is stupid but yeah they were buying them 10 at a time and, and whacking the, the miniatures in them so they could paint on uh, massed units and you know uh, groups of miniatures all at once um so i couldn't get one originally and um, then games workshop got more in stock and they couldn't keep those in stock and I went into my Warhammer store numerous times and they just went no we don't have any we're getting about three at a time in from the manufacturer and they are just selling out instantly because the first person that was going in and seeing them on the shelf was buying the entire stock but now I have one funnily enough just at the time when uh, Games Workshop have released two different styles of paint handle because this is paint handle that will hold individual unit miniatures it's literally just a clamp um with this it's got this spring loaded bit at the top and you just um just whack a miniature in there and then -dunk, and it will hold the miniature in place and then you can paint it that's pretty handy cool i'm not sure uh, you know the price i think i think they retail for about five pounds each i'm not sure i would have wanted to have bought 10 at a time but that's certainly handy it's a handy little doodad, um, particularly if you're going to be painting um, champions and things like that that you're going to spend a little bit more time on. You just whack him in there. Uh, the two new ones that Games Workshop have made, they've made one with a, a much bigger end bit so that it can hold things like dreadnoughts and big, large base miniatures. And they've released another one that's got little armatures so that if you're painting individual components um, rather than an assembled miniature, you can clamp the individual components. All handy stuff. Happy to have one of these, but it's not really what we're talking about today. It's not what we're supposed to be talking about. We're supposed to be talking about this, Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. And Eagle Eye viewers will have noticed that this issue comes with quite a lot of miniature goodness. So, um, like I say, I've been doing a series of videos on this magazine for quite some time. Um, so I'm, I'm going to just get to the point really um you pay 7.99 per issue which is quite a lot on a weekly basis eight quid a week um but generally you get good stuff with it the magazine is not bad but for me personally it's not not that useful because it is it's a really good magazine for people who are new to hobby gaming who are new to Warhammer 40k and don't know the rules and who are new to painting we'll have a look at the magazine in a moment first and foremost let's have a look at this because this is exciting this is a sprue of easy build aggressors um primaris aggressors 
and this is a sprue that retails from Games Workshop directly for £20. Now, I'm not the greatest mathematician in the world, but paying £7.99 for a magazine that comes with a sprue of miniatures with a value of £20 is pretty darn good. That is a saving of £12 and a penny. And, uh, and yeah, these are nice miniatures. They're big, chunky miniatures. Lots of stuff. Lots of bits. So that's cool. That's exciting. And that's a good deal. Not every magazine is a good deal. Some of the magazines are a little bit on the poor side. We will see some of those shortly in other videos. Um, but uh, from, from this current batch. But this issue, that's a good issue. That's a, a good value in terms of, of what you're getting, just in terms of the plastic on the magazine. Speaking of the magazine, here it is. There you go, that's what the aggressors look like when they're all assembled. Big beefcakes with um, the, the power gauntlets and attached weaponry for brutalizing. Let's have a look at the magazine. There's a picture of an aggressor doing pretty much what I just said, brutalizing people. Aggressors advance across the battlefield, reducing their enemies to cinders with sweeping arcs of searing flame. There you go. They are walking fortresses. They wade into enemy lines, gauntlet and back-mounted weapons spitting death. Bolt, grenade, flame or fist, their weapons obliterate foes at close range, leaving only shreds and cinders behind them. Kids, this is Warhammer 40k. So, what do we got in the magazine? You get some nice uh, background stuff. This is talking about the Gravis armor, which is the armor particular to the Primaris aggressors. Um, you get the cool diagram. It points out the relevant bits. It tells you what all the different weaponry is. And then um, we've got a bit of information on sort of war zones, Ultramar subsector. And then some other stuff, more fluff. A brotherhood reignited. It's about the salamanders. Fiery goodness. Really nice artwork. Um, you know, one of the things that Games Workshop do really, really well is world building or universe building, galaxy building whatever you want to call it um, and that takes many forms but their, their background fiction is great their artwork is great their miniatures are great um, it's they give you a whole universe to play in and and they bring that universe to life in lots of cool ways and you know there's some there's some really cool minute uh, cool uh, artwork there and then we get to the bit where it goes here's your sprue of aggressors with all them bits and it's going to tell you how to cut them out there's a picture of them using handy dandy clippers uh people who are new to miniature assembly use use clippers to get bits out of, out of sprues it makes sense don't try and use anything else and then we've got um some cool step-by-step -step instructions now these are easy build aggressors you get a sergeant and two two regulars but they are you know, slightly larger miniatures. Um, there's a few more components. Um, as you can see, sort of like the the arms are, are com comprise two parts because you've got the got the main arm and then you've got the weapon attachment. Um, so there's a uh, there's a few more bits than some of the other easy build stuff. I mean, if you compare it to like an easy build pox walker, some of the pox walkers are single piece miniatures and some of the others are two piece miniatures. When, you know, this is a, a much more um, a much more in-depth complicated build but it's still not difficult um, just always follow the, the numbering follow follow the, follow the guide carefully make sure you're assembling things in in the correct in the correct sequence and you will end up with some really rather splendid miniatures And then we get into how to paint aggressors. Now, what this magazine does is it um, 
it goes step by step with the painting based on the paints that they've given you in previous issues. So at this point, it's just going to show you how to apply colors you will already have from this magazine, which is quite cool because if this is your only in to the hobby, if this is the only way that you're accumulating stuff, you don't want them to go, um, oh, and you also need this paint, this paint, and this paint. That's something that a lot of painting guides it is a problem but for new people. They will sort of go, okay, well, how do I paint an ultramarine? They go and look online, look at a YouTube video or or look at a, a blog painting guide and there'll be a list of paints and they won't have those paints. And they start going, oh, yeah, but if I want to buy all those paints, that's going to cost me 30, 40 pounds. And, and that just makes painting um, it, it, as well as as well as, you know, the thought of painting miniatures can be quite intimidating for people who who are new to it, although it shouldn't be. It's a good laugh, it's fun, um, and it should be fun. It should be approached as something fun. But, you know, looking at a list of paints that you don't have can be quite daunting. And even now, sometimes when I think to myself, well, I don't know how to paint that type of miniature, I'll go and look online, I'll look at the, look at the list of paints, and I'll go, well, I haven't got any of those paints, and I've only got a few that will proxy in for those sort of paints based from my, my um, army painter range of paints and things like that. Um, so even now I still have that problem. So this painting guide is quite cool because it's just going to go through the paint with the paints you've got and then what they do is as they give you more paints they will go back to a previous miniatures and go oh and now you can apply this colour to that model that you've already painted to a certain degree. Golly that was a long winded explanation from me wasn't it? So here we go you know they're applying, applying, applying the blue then the black and then the lead belcher then non oil, which is liquid talent, because as soon as you apply non oil, um, I don't know if it's going to come out very well, but see the metal pipe work there. Um, that's just with the lead belt shirt on, and it looks quite flat. I mean, even just with that, you, you start to bring out the details of the miniatures and it starts to look much better. But then apply some non oil, and just look how, look how the details pop all of a sudden, and it starts to look like a real thing. It's got some shading, it's got some depth, it's got a little bit of grime and dirt on it. It starts to look like a real thing. Good thing about Primaris Marines, and particularly Aggressors, is they're massive. So they're quite good miniatures to get started with painting on. You know, if you've never done painting before, it, you know, it's a, a big surface to, to play with. Retribute to gold, and then the Agrax Earthshades which again is another another wash that brings out the details. And um, and after that, you get to that stage. And of course, that's not finished. That's not a finished model, but that is already a gajillion times better than no paint at all. And for some people, that's actually going to be, you know, that, that will be kind of like where they get to with their painting and they'll be happy with that. And that's fine too, because, you know, you've got the detail there. You've brought out some of the, some of the details. Um, it's got some colour to pop, and it's going to—it's going to from a distance on the tabletop. That's going to—you know—when you've got a load of those arrayed on the on the battlefield, that's going to look good. Next, this is a tutorial mission: Fire and Fury. So this is going to be a mission that introduces the aggressors and how to um how to use them. And they have kindly given you a great big wedge of poxwalker poxwalkers to practice against. Um, so. Uh, obviously, poxwalkers that came in a, in previous issue. In fact, they came in several previous issues. We've got a rules update with the stat line for the aggressors. Flamestorm gauntlets make two d six shooting attacks that hit automatically. Nasty. And they also act as melee weapons. Aggressors wound poxwalkers on a two plus, and plague marines on a three plus, because basically they're just walking tanks. Um, the tutorials in this magazine are pretty decent. They, they really do break things down in, into their component elements and work you through it step by step. It's quite nice. It's going to be a bit of a pain to come back to to reference certain things once you're playing, you know, more. But um, it's really nicely done. And the uh, diagrams and things showing with the little the little weapon effects and the little flames on the poxwalkers. We're on fire! It's all quite cool. It's all quite nice. Um, very easy to follow. I think they did a great job with the tutorials. Also hits on Overwatch. So it's just to covering that's those the, the new mechanics that relate to aggressors. Burn the traitor! So what's this? Three aggressors against 12 poxwalkers and three plague marines. 
And then some extra rules. Um, covering heavy damage. A shot from a plasma gun deals two damage. Um, I'm talking about the uh, the multi melter that's um, on the uh, the blight hauler. And that's it. That's everything in the magazine. So seven ninety nine, and you get three aggressor miniatures, a really good price, uh, a, a pretty good painting guide to get them to a certain base level of tabletop standard. And um, and yeah, what's going to be in the next issue? Check that out. It's a Death Guard character. It's a Blight Spawn. Which is cool. Check him out. He's got a little Nurgling with a grenade. Uh, up until this point, the Death Guard, they've been a little bit neglected in terms of characters. Um, the Ultramarines have got a couple of cool characters already. The Death Guard did get a vehicle which is nice but this is this is nice to give them to give them a character and it's a really cool character with some with some good you know it's a character with character but we will look at him next in the next in the next video but here's a little sneak peek at what's coming after dun 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 it's a crate it's like a loot box and that's it for now um Thank you very much for watching. Um, please uh, like and share if you thought this was interesting. Um, leave comments below I, uh, if you have comments or questions. Uh, particularly if you have questions, leave them. I will do my best to answer them. And um, I will see you all again very soon for another one of these videos. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.